We know that there are changes in pregnancy, but what really changes in pregnancy? I'm Trista Job, I'm the physical therapist here with Healthy Bump Club. And today we're gonna to be talking about some of the musculoskeletal changes that occur in pregnancy. Now, I guess I first have to go over that word, musculoskeletal. And what we're really talking about is that combination of the interaction between the muscles and the bones or the skeletal system within our body. Now, there are a lot of things that can have an effect on the skeletal system. Gravity is gonna have an effect, the way the muscles are pulling, causing um, the bones to move, things like that. And we know that during pregnancy, there are a lot of physiological changes. And these are things that can also have an effect on the way that the musculoskeletal system works. So basically, yeah, physiological changes are going to have musculoskeletal changes. So we talk about things like increase in the blood flow in the body, the way that the veins are going to work, the fact that we have these growing structures inside of us as the baby gets bigger, the uterus gets bigger, things like that happen. We have changes now that are going to pull and tug. Let's go back to what a skeletal system would look like in the basin or within the pelvis itself. So if we're looking at the pelvis, this is your bowl. Right now you'd have the bladder, you'll have the uterus, and back in here you'll have the colon. Got it? Now, as the baby gets bigger, this is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's gonna move away from being in the pelvis to being in the stomach or in the abdomen. And so as time goes on, there's gonna be changes within the structure and how it positions itself to hold and support that baby. Because of that increased size in the, in the uterus and in the size of the abdomen as it grows, you're going to have more of a strain on the front portion or the anterior portion of the skeletal system. Imagine we have the rest of the spine here. And some of those things are going to cause issues like um, back pain or pain in, in the tailbone or in the lower portion of the back. You're going to have pain in the upper neck. You can have pain in the jaw, in the head just for some of that pulling and tugging that happens as the bust increases and as the abdomen increases. There's gonna be that increase in the stress because now those muscles have to respond to still keep you upright, not have you fall forward, but those muscles have to be able to hold you in that position. And over time, as it gets more weighty, we start to have even more changes into the lower back. So we have an increase in that curve into the lower back, makes our butt look a lot bigger. Sometimes, yes, it has grown. Other times it's the way our position is. And some of these things can just cause a lot more of that pain that you feel sometimes. One of the other places that has to increase or expand to allow room for that baby is also going to be the rib cage. So when we think about it, as the uterus is coming up and out and it's taking up all that room, it starts to push things out of its way. One of the ways that it pushes would be up. And so now for better breathing, the rib cage has to spread open a little bit. And that diaphragm that usually drops low when you breathe, it can no longer do that as easily. Not that it doesn't, but not as easily. It takes more effort to do that. And so we have that changing in the rib cage that can sometimes cause a little bit of discomfort and cause some changes in the way they're breathing as well. So all of these things can happen with the skeletal system as a result of some of these physiological changes that are happening. Now, what we've looked at so far is what happens kind of on the upper portion. We said head, neck, jaw pain, shoulder pain, back pain, upper back pain, mid back pain, low back pain, hip pain. But one of the things that can happen as well, we're looking at changes in the posture and that's gonna start all the way down at the feet. Now, we have an arch in our foot that helps to support us. When we have increase in weight, especially when it's not as subtle, let's imagine two to three months, a shocking amount of weight gain, which can sometimes happen in pregnancy. You now have those arches starting to flatten out. So they're no longer able to maintain the position of the foot as we step and as we walk they start to drop a little bit. As a result, we can have some of that 
pain, discomfort that happens there. And one of the things that happens is the plantar fasciitis. So we're talking about that pain that you get on that first step in the morning because the arch, the arch of the foot and the things that support the arch of the foot are now being tested in a way that they're not accustomed to. Um, they can get irritated, they can get inflamed. And sometimes we have to do specific treatments to address those. One of the other things that you would have is an increase in the achiness and soreness in the feet. Once again, with there being changes in the blood flow and with some of the hormones, the balance with which, with which they are working in the body, it can cause it to be a little bit more pooling of fluid into the legs. That can help to create some of that achiness, that, sore, that soreness in the feet that happens. For some women, they get some relief with compression stockings or compression garments. And if you look back at one of our, some of our other videos, some of our other educational content, we talked about the fact that there can be a change in the size of the mother's feet as she's going through pregnancy and even after. Yes, that does happen as well. Back to the current things of what can happen with it. Because of the need to expand in the pelvis for when that baby is actually going to be delivered, that labor process, we have um, hormones that are released that are gonna cause some laxity in the joints. And what does that mean exactly, joints being lax? It means that it allows the joints to stretch a little further than they normally would. So for that woman's pelvis to allow that baby to come through, there's gonna be the ability of it to just open a little bit more. No, it's not like opening a door. We're talking about just separating a little bit more so that the baby can pass through on their way out the body. But of course, with some of that laxity in the joint, it can lead to some additional discomfort in other parts of the body. So these are some of the physiological things that can happen that are gonna affect the musculoskeletal system. Some of the other more subtle ways are gonna be more posture-based. So a lot of the postural changes that are gonna happen will also have an effect on the musculoskeletal system. So for one of the things that happens is our center of gravity or where gravity affects us most to keep us grounded, it shifts forward. So instead of being right down through the center of our legs, it now gets shifted forward with some of that weight that comes along with it. Everything gets pushed a little bit more forward. That can cause there to be a difference in the way that we walk, the difference in the way that we stand. We balance ourselves a little differently to maintain that posture and that balance. Sometimes that can cause a little bit of pain as well. Some of the additional postural changes, because of that shift in the center of your gravity, because of that increase in the bust, increase in the abdomen, we start to have a bit of a pulling down effect. And so we tend to have that forward head posture where your ears are much further in front of your shoulders. Right, And we almost give that little turtle sticking out of the shell look. We tend to get a lot more rounding down of the shoulders. We tend to get a lot more of an arch into our lower back. So instead of it being a small arch just to line everything up to gravity, it becomes more exaggerated as our pelvis gets tilted this way a bit more. We also end up getting a much wider base of support. And so instead of standing with our legs more close, we tend to widen our stance to get a little bit more balance within our, our legs, our body, our whole system as a result. And of course, as we talked again about the fallen arches and how having those arches fall can then change a lot of the way the rest of the body lines up. So instead of us having um, our weight over the full foot, we may have a weight more on the inside of the foot. Our knees may tend to turn a little bit more, pressure come through the hips up the back. So it changes the structure a little bit more. With many of these changes to the musculoskeletal system, there can be pain that's involved. And as I've mentioned in and throughout this talk, the fact is that many of, these, many of these pains, many of these aches and discomforts can be addressed. Um, seeking physical therapy for help, um, alerting the doctors to, the, to the, the pain and having safe methods of pain relief, whether it is by massage, whether it is by um, heat packs or cold packs, whether it is just changes in posture and position. But these are things that can be addressed to help make the 
process of pregnancy to be less discomforting, to be less painful. Pain may be present, but it's not always untreatable. If we are having extreme amounts of pain, uh, numbness, tingling, these are reasons why we see the doctor um, and see what the options may be, including coming to see a physical therapist for some pain relief.